So here's the tote. See it lines up pretty well. This was electrical taped together. Uh, kind of a shame. You'd like to think whoever owned this plane decades if not longer ago when it broke had the acumen of woodworking to take 15 minutes out of their busy life and properly glue it back together. What I'm going to do, I've never done this before, I'm going to soak these two ends in some water. I'm thinking if there is glue in here it might soften it. And also I'm wondering if some of these fibers maybe have been compressed over the decades and they might swell and be more closer to their original shape. And as I peel it up it's taking what appears to be some of the wood fibers with it. I was very careful to stay on the interior of the uh, broken surface. It still doesn't key very well. I think right there is where it's supposed to sit. And unfortunately the brake line doesn't seem to have gotten any smaller. So here's a better view of the seam. You can feel it pretty much everywhere. You can get your finger in there. In fact as I look down through right there I can actually see a little bit of daylight. I don't have any scrap rosewood, about the darkest wood I have of any abundance is mahogany. And what I think I might do to try to use it as a filler is to stain it extra dark. And I think I'm going to need to fill that gap with uh, something a little bit beyond glue. As you're using a hand plane, you're pushing it this way. So as you put pressure on the tote, the tendency is to lean on it in such a way where you're putting the leading edge of the tote under compression. And even though you're going against the grain, that's relatively strong. However, the back side of the tote is going to be in tension. That's a relatively weak part. So if you could reinforce the tote, put something on the back edge that was very strong in tension, like a bamboo skewer or a toothpick, that would add an awful lot of strength. Again, the, the fibers are running almost perfectly along the length of the toothpick. And wood's greatest strength is really along the grain in tension. If I try to grab these and pull it apart, the fibers are very, very strong in that direction. As a side note, during the planing action, this nut and steel shaft transfer a good part of the force down to the body of the plane. It's hard to imagine this tote breaking if the nut is firmly holding the tote to the body. So if you want to protect your tote, keep this nut good and snug. Here I'm making the drill guide. Now I'm marking the holes where I think they look good. I'm using the drill press to locate the tote piece in the vise, aligning the bolt shaft with the quill of the drill press. This should guarantee that the holes I drill will be parallel to the bolt shaft. And I think that's looking pretty good in both the X and Y directions. Kind of hard to get it on camera. The other half was the same. So it fits together pretty well now, and uh, two of the holes came out really good. Those are the outer two as you're looking at them. The inner two, I had to go two drill sizes up. I also discovered, strangely, this drill bit that I was using to key doesn't really fit very well. It goes very well through the lower half, but uh, to get it all the way up to the top, the handle doesn't fit together very well. So. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but I suspect that might be part of the reason why uh, my two holes didn't line up quite so hot. I'm not going to say that these two toothpicks are adding the maximum amount of strength, but uh, I think the epoxy uh, against the rosewood will be on par with the strength of the original rosewood, and I think the two toothpicks will uh, add strength. So I think what I'm going to end up with is going to be stronger than the original tote. Now I'm gluing wood shavings to the perimeter of each half. Later on, I carefully trimmed these pieces to about a millimeter in width to form a sort of lip on each half. It's just clamped together to hold them in place while a little bit of glue is uh, setting up. 
And I have to admit, I'm a little bit impressed. Uh, it seems to be filling in that little tiny gap. But on this side, it seems to have acted like a reasonable gasket to fill that little tiny gap. And here are the two halves, and you can kind of see the little pieces that I glued around the perimeter. I had a little bit of a gap in there, so I took the time to glue in uh, three layers of wood. I decided to glue this in at least uh, two steps. I want to glue the two toothpicks in uh, half of the tote. And I have this little cradle here to hold it uh, so that these are more or less plumb. I'll fill these two holes with epoxy and I have some tape on the top of the toothpicks so that as the epoxy is setting up in the two holes I can put this top piece on and that will locate the toothpicks to be sitting more or less correctly as the epoxy sets up. Just using common cheap five minute epoxy I think this joint will be Plenty strong. I went out to get this longer setting epoxy. Uh, this sets up in 8 to 12 hours, but it's supposed to give me a good 30 minutes of uh, handling and setup time. My plan is I will mix this and use this as the main adhesive to bond the two halves together. I think on the perimeter of the joint, and I'm also toying with the idea of using ordinary uh, wood glue tinted with uh, mahogany uh, sanding dust. Uh, these two pieces will go together, and I also made this cradle to sit up there so that I can get even clamping pressure. I'm mixing far more epoxy than I think I'm going to need, for obvious reasons. So here it is glued up and dry. It's uh, quite strong and you can clearly see the glue line. I don't think we're fooling anybody with that one. It doesn't look that bad though. It looks to me like somebody had a clean break and only did a Metz -a Metz job of gluing it, which considering how bad this break was to begin with, I'd kind of put that already in the category of victory. There's so much schmutz on the handle, I think I'm going to try my best at refinishing it. And uh, I just hope I don't make it look any worse. Okay, so here's an update. After I glued the two halves together, I filled in the seam with a couple pastes of wood glue and sanding dust. This is the rosewood that I sanded here and I also have some mahogany and I would force it into the cracks and then try to burnish it in by rolling the toothpick over it. Once it dried I would sand it and I ended up doing that two, three, four, five times. Before we get too far I want to point out this is hardly a perfect tote. There's a lot of chowdering up here on the horn and it's worn very heavily here and here and the back edge is pretty badly worn. There's a divot taken out of the front here and down on the bottom of the heel there's a bunch of dents and divots all along the tote. There's various places where there's a good sized dent or divot that uh, you know you could have addressed if you wanted to. I chose not to. Once you have it smooth what I did to match the colors is I have this brown dye that's nearly black and in the areas of the grain where it's really dark I just took the tiniest amount on a toothpick and worked it specifically in where it needed to be and if it got too dark then you could sand it away to lighten it. On the lighter areas I have a couple of these touch-up pens. There's a light and a medium. Both of them actually come out reasonably dark on this wood and I use that in these areas to try to match the color a little bit better. Now just to talk about the repairs so far we'll start on the good side. If you go around here I think you can barely see the outline of the line. If you know what you're looking for, you can see it. This side came out 
almost perfect very happy with that the back of it again uh, came out pretty good uh, very pleased with it uh, this side was the biggest problem and it's running along here had a lot of trouble on these lighter areas there was a big area that had to be filled with the filler and then in the front you can't really see this when it's on the plane but again looking pretty good so I'm pleased with it the other thing to point out these lines here the grain is running this way with a slight arc to it I had oiled this up a light coat of uh, tongue oil you can see the line here again it's more a uh, difference in sheen not so much color and then I put a very thin coat of shellac to add a little bit of uh, protection and a sheen after that set up I hit it with some fine steel wool kind of rubbing where the wear surfaces would be so the body of the tote and the top of the horn there's a little more shine down here if you look for the joint it's running across right there on this side barely visible and I think that's only if you know what you're looking for and on the back you can't really see it anymore the sheen has been matched it's running across right there and on this side it's running along there barely visible I can see a little hint of a discoloration right there and on the front you can't really see it so I think this came out really good and in comparison there it is next to the knob and the knobs had nothing done to it and you can see they're very similar in color so very pleased with how it came out now I can finally get on to uh, cleaning up the rest of the plane here it is outside it's an overcast day but this is in daylight you can see the line kinda right around there can't really see much of a color variation there's the line running across there I think it came out very good and in comparison in daylight there it is next to the knob and I've done nothing to the knob so that's uh, as I found it I think with a little cleaning up they're pretty much same color so very pleased with that on this side you really have some beautiful reds coming through and you can see the grain very handsome well this part of the project is coming to a close but uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out and I uh, appreciate as always any of you guys stopping by, checking out my work, any comments are always appreciated. Thanks.